Welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today we are doing another crochet along and how to read a pattern brought to you by Leisure Arts. Thank you very much to Leisure Arts for providing this. We are going through in our How to Read a Crochet Pattern series, and today we are going to be working on the Amish Hexagon Afghan. We're working on this motif right here, okay? And here's our little working sample. What we're going to do is go through this pattern, learn how to read the pattern, and then actually do a crochet along, and we will make these together, and then I'll show you how to connect them. So let's get started. Today's yarn is brought to you by Lion Brand Yarns in the Vanish Choice line. It's a worsted number four medium weight yarn, and we are actually using the same coloring that is used in the book so that it can be ultra clear as to which one we're using. So let's get started. Thank you again to Lion Brand Yarns. All right, so when we start reading a pattern, we wanna make sure and read the whole thing before we really get going. This book here is going to show us several crochet motif motifs, and we're working on the Amish hexagon afghan. This is the blanket that we're gonna be working on, the afghan. And here it talks about, uh, this is the where they've got the title page of the title of the pattern, Amish hexagon afghan, and it lays out that we're going to uh, begin our hexagon motif by working color uh, one chain at the beginning of the chain and join the first stitch uh, when working in the round. So we're going to go around in circles and join a new color of yarn. And we'll also be doing a whip stitch and putting the motifs together through the back loop. Okay, this pattern is set as an easy pattern. The finish size is 44 by 60 inches or 112 centimeters by 152 and a half centimeters. Uh, they've got it laid out uh, for your materials as the shopping list is a medium weight yarn number four It's three and a half ounces 170 yards or 100 grams 156 meters per skein fall. Um, you've got three colors Okay, so color a is going to be dusty purple. That's this outside part here eight skeins so whatever you want your main color to be is going to be eight then color B is magenta. You need four skeins, so half of that. That's going to be this next color here. And then color C is the inside here. That's dusty rose, two skeins. Now, change up your, however you want to do it. You can make a change, but whatever you do to this motif here, um, it can make a different look in your entire pattern. So um, you can really make this um, very creatively different. Uh, I'll show you a couple of pictures here later in the book that they've supplied, which is really kind of nice. And the crochet hook, you want to size I, five and a half millimeter, or the size that you need to get the gauge uh, in order to get this uh, gauge size here. Additional supplies, you'll need a yarn needle, and of course, you're going to need some scissors. Now, each motif measures about four inches across or 10 centimeters. And if yours measures that, then you should achieve the total size that was listed above when using their diagram. And that is from the straight edge to the straight edge. So when I take out my motif and we measure straight edge to straight edge, this is the straight edge to straight edge here. So this would be four inches across, okay? And then the gauge swatch, which would be, in this case, making one whole motif, which is the same size that we said before, work one motif of 42 double crochet and six uh, chain, two spaces. That's basically what we're doing here. So you can um, count these right here for the double crochet here. And then these are the two spaces um, where you're going around. So like where it says, six chain there's one two three four or five six spaces here uh, where there's two chains okay so when you're counting you're you're counting that final and then there's double crochets in between here so if you count all these crochets all the way around it's equal to 42 so that's how you can get your gauge and then let's just check my gauge here pull this out and mine is at four or just a hair shy of that so i'm right about where I need to be, we'll flip that over, which is just shy of about 10 centimeters. If you count to the back loop, it's right at 10. So um, I've I've got mine pretty much where theirs was at. Of course, I use the exact same yarn that was used in the pattern. Uh, so my tension was very close to the original. 
And of course, you need a measuring tape if you want to get that gauge. It's not listed. Okay, so when we start reading the instructions, you want to go through all of it and uh, then kind of go back through and reread sections that you just don't understand. Make some notes out to the side. Okay, so one motif, um, you're going to make 188 of them. Okay, so they're small. So um, the same motifs and squares begin with a chain and all the stitches of the first round are worked into the first chain made. With this motif, the skip chains become the first stitch of the round as well as a chain space once the round is joined. So what that means is what you're building here is going to look like one of these little spokes on the wheel. So one of these is actually a chain here. Okay, round one, this is going to be the right side with color C, which is the lighter of the color here. You're going to chain six, that's CH chain six, and then in parentheses, it's noting a direction that we do all at the same time. So we're gonna double crochet in uh, chain two. Okay, once we do that all the way around, we get it, we're gonna do it five times, okay? And then in the sixth chain from the hook, we're gonna join with a slip stitch to the third chain of the beginning chain six. Okay, so once we do that, it's going to um, join back up. So this one right here is gonna chain in the third from the hook, okay? So right here, it's laying out figure, here it is, figure A is here. So you chain up six with color C and then um, you are going to um, chain in the sixth chain from the hook, okay? Right here is where you're going to put a double crochet and then chain two, okay? And then you do it again, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain two in this same hole the entire time. You go all the way around five times. And then this original part looks like the sixth part. See how that is? So this became, this is the original chain, and then you chained two, and then you go down into this middle part and do a double crochet, chain two, and then double crochet, chain two, and keep going all the way around. And then this part here goes into the top here and it creates a connected circle, just like this. Okay, so that's figure A and B. And there's a little catch here that says finish off. All that means is when you're done and you slip stitch through here, you actually just uh, yarn over one more time and pull it through and cut your yarn and you're finished with that. Okay, so say you're making all of these, you could make 188 of these little things first. So, I mean, if you wanted to, you can just sit there with the one color, make them all, and then make your do, start doing your, your next phase here. Okay, so after you finish that, there's a note at the bottom that says, loop a short piece of yarn around any stitch to mark round one as right side. So you'd want to, you could put a stitch marker or you could put um, an opposite color yarn here, whatever, after you've woven off, um, we did any of these ends here and just put something on the front so you know that that side is the right side. Now, what I did is I actually leave my tail in the back here and I know that the back uh, tails are my right, are my wrong side. Um, that's just how I like to do it because I don't like to put an extra piece of yarn in here, but it depends on the pattern. So that's what they're suggesting and I'll show you what I mean later. Okay, so with round two, with the right side facing, so instead of turning like you normally would, you're going to join color B with a slip stitch and, and anywhere around here. So it doesn't really matter, but what I do is I kind of back it up right to the beginning here. And then um, and this, this is covers in figures A and B here and here. And you're gonna do a slip stitch and any chain two, the spacing, and then chain three which is the same as when it, we originally did it and it counts as a double crochet. And this mean, when it says now and throughout, it means every time it says that, it's meaning that that is, these all count as the double crochet, is, um, it counts as a double crochet. Then you're gonna do two double crochets in the same space. So there ends up being one, two, three spokes coming out of there. Chain two. And then three double crochet in the next chain two space, chain two. So we're going to chain up, do two, two double crochets, 
chain over, which skips this little area, then do three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. And so all you're doing is putting it all the way around here, okay? So here we go. Here's a chain, two double crochets, chain over, two double crochet, uh, three double crochets, and then you're going all the way around, and then you'll be finished with that round. Okay. Join with slip stitch to the first double crochet, finish off. Okay, so then after you're done here, you finish it off and you've got 18 double crochet and 18 chain two spaces. This 18 double crochet is telling you, uh, just to confirm with you, that you have 18 of these double crochets lining up all the way around here. And we have um, six sets of three around. So six times three is 18. So that's what that 18 double crochet is. So it's just a count. So with round three, with the right side facing, again, join color A, which is the dusty purple, with slip stitch in any chain two. So I would say the same thing is over here. Kind of move all the way over to the side here, to the right. Well, if you're left-handed, you want to do the opposite. And then you're going to um, slip stitch and chain three. Okay, which becomes a double crochet. Then you double crochet once, then chain two, and then two double crochet in the same space. Okay, so you're going to, let's say we slipped the stitch here. You're gonna chain up the three, and then you double crochet. So it looks like two double crochets. Then you chain two, which turns and makes this corner of the hexagon, and then you're going to double crochet twice again. This is all in this same spacing right here. Okay, so this is making your corner. So that's what that just did. All right, now we're going to double crochet in the next three double crochet. Okay, so what that is, is we um, are gonna double crochet in the top of these three double crochets. So I've got one, two, three, four in, in the corner. And then I have these three double crochets, and so I have one, two, three in the tops of those, okay? Now, this is where we have our star, and in between the stars or asterisks is where you repeat. So now we're going to um, be repetitive all the way around. We're gonna do two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. That's, that's the corner area in the next two chain space. So that's the next one over. So say we just did this corner and this straight away. Now we're gonna do another corner. Okay, and then we're going to double crochet in the next three double crochets. So then we do a straight away. And then we're gonna repeat. So we're doing a corner and then the straight away and a corner and a straight. All the way around and then join with a slip stitch to the first double crochet. Then finish off by looping it through and then you have four, 20, I'm sorry, you have 42 double crochet all the way around and then you are done with your motif and then you weave it in and then you put everything together okay so over here it's got a, a diagram okay it's got an assembly diagram but before we get into it it's still telling us how to put this together so assembly and now for the illustration purposes uh, they've shown it in this magenta color but you would put it in the purple so let me just show you right here see how you can't see the magenta color that's because we're using you want to use the same color a that you did before okay you're going to whip stitch two motifs together as follows you're going to place the motifs with the right side facing uh, and edges matching with color a and beginning in second chain of the first two uh, first chain two, sew through both pieces, one secure at the beginning of the seam. So all this is doing, this is just kind of walking you through exactly what you're going to do. So this book really lays it out. But of course, we're going to do this uh, here in a minute um, for our crochet along. Uh, also, it says um, a tip when you whip stitch squares together, maintain a relaxed tension on the sewing yarn and do not pull the stitches too tightly. If possible, use the yarn tails for sewing to reduce the number of ends to be woven in later. Now, it didn't quite work for me because my end would stop about right here. And so it wasn't quite at the corner. And so I like to finish it off right at the corner. So I actually end up weaving some of my little tails in and then actually starting over again. The reason why it's important to place the right sides together is because of the way the loops are placed. Um, you'll see we're going through the back loops of these edges here. Okay, 
So I'm showing you this in case you end up doing this on your own and you don't stick around for the crochet along. Uh, if you see that I can, here's the front of this, this edge here. See this edge? Okay, the edge of the chain. That's the front. But when I'm laying it flat, you can actually see the back stitch here. Now this is the right side of the motif. If I flip this over, you don't see that. You see the very back edge here, but you're not seeing uh, this side here. So when you flip it over, this is um, this is where you wanna have all of them together. Now, if you have a hard time telling, because if you're too new to this, then I would suggest that if you're gonna weave in everything, go ahead and leave in this um, back tail. Like I already wove this in. I know this is actually the wrong side. And then I left this tail before actually cutting it off so that I know this is the back. And in the end, I'll just go and clip all my tails, but they're already woven in, okay? If that makes any sense to you, it might later. Okay, and then the final part of the, um, of the pattern is telling you how to assemble it. So sometimes you'll have just notes on it or you'll actually have a diagram. Uh, this one's really cool because uh, say you want to change up your colors and they're not all the same, you could um, get some trace paper or make a um, make a personal copy for yourself. Um, I would just put like some kind of tracing paper over the top of it and you can make uh, color notes on here and come up with your own little pattern. So this is really handy to have. So it's just talking about how um, it says refer to assembly diagram, whip stitch remaining motifs together, forming seven vertical strips of 14 motifs each and six vertical strips of 15 motifs each. So these shorter rows are going to have 14 and these longer ones are going to have 15. So, and then they're telling you how many strips you're going to put together. Okay. Now I'm going to show you something that is included. I love. Okay. Do you see how they made these motifs and they look totally different? So, um, this white here tends to fade away while this middle part that's like a well, it looks kind of, it may look kind of black on camera, but it's kind of a dark maroon color and it really jumps out at you and you really notice it. But then the white here makes it sort of fade back or the beige color. It's just saying, notice how the dark and the light colors make the features of the motif stand out or fade away into the background. So you can really um, make it your own. Just remember that whatever you use to sew these together is going to cohesively tie these two together. So if you notice all this purple it, this is where my whip stitch is this middle part okay but if i used a contrasting color you're going to see this diagonal whip stitch throughout so you could do that as a decoration or um, make it blend together all right so we are going to start our crochet along be sure and grab your supplies and we'll get started Okay, we're going to start with our slip knot. Okay. And we're going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And now we're going to um, double crochet into the sixth chain. Okay, so we'll put that through. Six chain from the hook. Okay, pull it on through, pull two, and two. Okay, and now we're going to chain two, one, two, and now we're going to double crochet into that six chain from the hook. Pull through, two, and two chain two, double crochet, same spot, pull through two, and two, chain two, double crochet, and notice that center circle might be getting a little bit bigger as you pull on through it. Okay. And then chain two. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, and six spokes is what we're going to do. 
So double crochet. Let's do this slow if you're not familiar with it. I'm so sorry I didn't do that close slow enough. We're going to, for double crochet, we're going to wrap around once, put through that hole there in the middle, wrap it around again and pull that through. Okay, wrap it around again and pull through the first two on the loop. One, two, and then wrap around again and pull through the next two. Okay, so that creates a uh, double crochet and then we're going to um, chain two, one, two, and now we're going to go up uh, three. So one, two, three, and pull through, make sure to put our yarn, our hook right through both of those two loops. Uh, on, on our hook here. Grab some yarn, pull that through, and now slip it. Okay, so now all we have to do is um, finish off, and to finish off you're going to yarn over and pull through, cut your yarn. Okay, and now you're done with this round one. It's called to make 188 of these, so um, you could just sit and make a whole bunch of these and then move on to round two. Let's uh, let's get our next yarn. So I'm going to make a slip knot and get my hook. Okay. Now um, I want to um, leave this tail in the back and that will be my wrong side um, but like I said uh, they said that you can put through uh, put a um, a scrap piece of yarn or something and put it on the front for the right side uh, if you want to mark it like the right side you could just flip this one through to the front uh, so that you know um, but like I said this one just to me is a natural indicator that it's the back so um, Follow the pattern if you wish to do it that way. Now this part right here um, where we fastened it off, I'm going to use that and lock it in because I don't want to have to weave that in later. Uh, so let's go ahead and use that to our advantage. Um, I want to also this beginning strand here, I want to work this in. So uh, I'm going to um, go back a couple from this spoke here. So like I'm going to work towards this direction. So let me back up a little bit and go in uh, here. Okay, I'm going to go in this two chain spot and pull through my working yarn, not my tail. Okay, pull that on through and slip the stitch. Alright, so that's slipped. Now I have my working yarn and I think you can see it now so I'll pull this over here and out of the way. Okay, so I have my working yarn back here. I have my tail um, for, from the beginning. So I'm going to put that away so you don't see that. Now this is the, um, this is the ending finish off from round one. So uh, we're going to lay this tail from our second color on top. Okay, so now we're going to follow directions to chain three, one, two, three, and two double crochet in the same space. So we're going to wrap around and go through this space here. And when we do that, trap this straggler here on top. Now yarn over and pull through. Okay, now we're going to yarn over again and pull through the first two on the chain, uh, on the hook and then wrap around again and pull through two again. So now we've got our first double crochet. We're going to do one more. Go wrap around, wrap, pull through two, and two. Okay, so now we have one, two, three double crochets. Let's do that again. So this is now being locked in this little straggler. So chain two, okay, and then three double crochet in the next chain space and then chain two. So we're going to do the same thing again, three double crochet and then chain two. So now here we go, double crochet. Uh, 
That's one. Two. Three. Okay. Keep going. Chain two. Double crochet in the next two chain space. One double crochet, two, three, chain two, one, two. Okay, now we can let this one go because it's in there for the last three, what I'm calling them a spoke going around here. And see, now we have the straggler from our the ending of round one that we can start trapping in. So we've already chained two, we're going to double crochet in this next space, and I'm going to go ahead and lay this one over so it really is locked down. Okay, double crochet, one, two, three, chain two, and double crochet in the next chain, two chain space here, this gap. Double crochet. It's number two. And number three, chain two. Keep making sure that this one's locked in here. See how it's laying on top? Like that. Last one. And I'm going to go ahead and let this just fall to the back between these two. So when I cut it off, uh, it's not really going to go anywhere. So double crochet this last one. Okay. Now we're going to chain two. And we're going to slip in the third chain from the hook just as we did on the last round. slip stitch and then we're going to finish that off by cutting it okay now um, you can go ahead and cut this one okay so that one's oops I cut that one a little short I'm going to finish that off later okay and then um, that this other one was locked in so you can go ahead and cut that one as well and then leave this one alone. Okay, so this beginning one in the center is going to show you that this is the wrong side. Okay, so now let's go ahead and um, start working on round three. Okay, so round three, wrap and do a slip knot. And we're going to slip stitch in here. Okay, if you're not used to slip stitching in here, I usually hold this little straggler one down 
and then give myself a little bit of attention. Okay, let's look at the directions. It says, with the right side facing, join color A with slip stitch in any chain two space, which is here, and then we're going to chain three, one, two, three. Okay, so I'm gonna double crochet. I'm gonna put my little straggler here on top of the color C. Double crochet through the chain two space. That's one. And then we're going to chain two. That's one, two. And then do two double crochet in the same space. That's one. And two. Okay. So what that's going to do is make our corner. And now we're going to double crochet in the next uh, double crochet. So when you pull these apart here, you can see the post and you can see the next chain, which is right here lining up with this post. This chain is here. See that? So go ahead and yarn over, pull through the loop, pull a yarn over, come through again, yarn over, pull through the first two loops through your double crochet, pull through the second two with the yarn over, and you've got one double crochet in that first stitch. You're gonna double crochet in the next one. Okay, and double crochet in the next one. So that is number three. So we've got two double crochets, because that first chain uh, counts as a double. Then we've got um, a two chain two, and then two more double crochets, and then three in the top of these uh, double crochets. So now we're gonna start this again. We're going to double crochet in the next two space, two times, with the two chain in between, and then another two times. So that's one, Two, chain two, one, two, okay, and then now we're going to repeat going in the tops of all of these here. So this is a double crochet in here. Remember when you pull it through, you're going to have two uh, chain on the top of your uh, hook. Pull that through, so you have three loops on your hook. Pull through two, wrap, pull through two again. Do that again. Go through the next, pull through and double crochet twice, or once. And then the next one is your third double crochet across. This is the straightaways. Okay, so we just did two corners and two straightaways. See how now you've got um, where it's turning at a 45 here? Well, it's not technically 45. Uh, so we've got the straight away and then we've got this angle and then another corner coming up. So double crochet at the corner. Another double crochet for two. Chain two. Double crochet. Okay, next one, and this is where we've got a little straggler coming from color B. So just lay it on top of the round two, the ending of round two, and you'll be able to uh, lock that in. All right, so continue going all the way around, and I'll meet you back in a moment when you've finished your motif.
Okay, so I'm all the way at the end and I need to fasten this off. And so I'm gonna go up the third from the hook again and go into that stitch and slip stitch. Go ahead and, uh, whoops, yarn over, pull through and cut it. And then I'll show you how to weave in these tails. Okay, so we're gonna weave in the tails here. And we've got our tapestry needle. And what I wanna do is leave this piece here on the center to do it last. And so if you're weaving in these outside tails, um, you'll you'll know, um, anyway, this, this can be your indicator here and you'll be able to fasten these off and cut them. So I'm gonna start at the outside one, which is my color A. And mine, when I fasten them off, um, because I've, I've got um, the two double crochets and then the space, which is the corner, and then you have two more double crochets, I'm actually not on the corner. So I don't feel comfortable just starting my weaving from there because then I have to finish off these little corners and kind of funny spots. So I like to finish and start at the corner. So when you fasten off, um, you can tell that your chains are headed in this direction here and these are chains are headed in this direction, but when you finish, you don't wanna pull back the chain this way because then it kind of interrupts that look. So uh, you wanna kind of fake a loop here. So pull through this area over here and make a chain. Okay, see how that kind of finishes that off? And then now you can go down inside and come, come up through one of these posts here All right, and then I'm going to go through this area here. I've lost my needle, so let's put that back on. And then I'm gonna go through right here where the double crochets are going through the chains. Okay. And then I'll go down about halfway that I have yarn. And then I'll uh, go right in the middle of where the same color is and then come back around, okay? So when I come back around, I kind of loop over and then go through a few of those threads and come back this way. And what that does is it locks it in and so this is not gonna wiggle out on you. And you're gonna cut that off and finish up with that color. And then go ahead and do your next colors here. And this one here in the middle, so let's pretend I did that one already, okay? This one in the middle, I'm gonna go around the center and then come up through one of those posts. Okay, just gonna reinforce the center here instead of just coming up one particular post at first. Go all the way around. So I'm gonna come up through here, weave it through. All right, and now I can go through these chain spots. So I'll go, I'll go through a few of them. And then kind of come up the middle here and go back on myself. And then come up through the middle here. And then that's where I'm actually gonna cut it off later. And I'm gonna leave this on the back so I know that's, um, this is the wrong side and then this is the right side. And now we're gonna get started on joining these together. Okay, so if you wanna look back at the directions and rewind, you can see the directions that I've already sort of spelled out for you that's written. Um, but this is a chain two spot, and these are the corners here, and all those are going to touch each other. So when you start, you're gonna look, at, you're gonna have all the right sides facing you. So if you know that this was the wrong side, you're gonna make sure those they're all flipped the correct way. So pick the first one up and study it. Pull these apart and you've got this chain two space here. You're gonna go to the second chain. So if this is the first one, we're gonna go to the second one. And this left loop here, if you're looking at my video right, I'm gonna flip the other crochet video. Um, but this back loop here is the one that you're gonna pull through. If you accidentally have it facing the wrong way, you can't tell. 
because you're going to think that that's a back loop on here and that's actually the front of the wrong side. So flip this over and they actually lay correctly. That's the whole point of that front side. So we're going to the second chain, the back loop, and we're going to pull through that one. But at the same time, we're also going to do it on this side. So we're going to pick this one up, go to the empty space, find the back loop of the second chain. So here's the first chain and the second chain. All right. We're going to go through these and leave a nice tail here. All right, you don't need a knot. All right, now um, we're going to the back of the next loop. So you can see where this loop is because of my contrasting color. We're gonna go to this loop here, and then the next one. So we're going through only the back loops, and make sure and leave it loose here, but it's not gonna be um, a huge amount. It's just gonna be um, just slightly snug here. Okay, so it's not tight. You're not creating a ridge. It's going to be very flat. And now that you've gone through that, we're going to go through the next one. And so just going across and over and you're creating a whip stitch. Go through this back loop on the other side. Pull through. And do you see how it's creating this stitch? This is called a whip stitch. It's going from one side under and over. Okay, over and under and over and just making a, a circle all the way around. So continue going around and, um, and then when you get to the corner you can um, meet me back up and uh, we'll connect the next one. Okay, so by now you've gone all the way to the end. Um, it's got this cute little stitch on it, so if you wanted to do that, you can. Otherwise, it's going to look like this here. See how that looks? So definitely with a contrasting color, it's kind of fun. Okay, so let's join the third one. All right, make sure our yarn is up on top so we don't get that trapped. We're on the front side, the right side here. The same one, grab the second stitch. So if I consider this, if I turn this around, this is the bottom, we're gonna go to the second one. Grab that free loop and come over here and grab this free loop here. Okay, because that's the next one over. And continue your whip stitch and go this way. So in the next free loops, just pull them together. And I just use my needle, and I like to use a blunt tapestry needle that's really big. And then I can really kind of pick apart these loops and find it easily. Again, keep it nice and loose. See how this is um, connected, but it's not making a ridge. It's not pushing it up. It's just keeping it very flat. Okay, we are up to the corners here. All right, okay, say so you're following along this diagram here, and you're going to continue going along the same direction. You would just continue along, especially have, if you have a whole bunch of them and you weave them this way, but you're eventually gonna have, if, even if you go like this across all of them, then you're gonna have all these little slits here. So you have to, um, what I like to do is, I think like making um, a, a bunch of them that are like this seven, like this, and then sewing more of them together, and then that way it, um, it kind of comes together a little easier. So, um, so say I've done this one, um, and I wanna add another one here, I would just go along this area 
and then continue that way and just go around. Um, you could go up this direction. Now, if we want to join this one, what we have to do is you could cut this yarn, um, loop it in. Um, you could go run back. If it's if you're doing a contrasting yarn, you're gonna have to be very careful about um, hiding it. But um, let's say this is the same color, and I'm say this uh, this is the end of my row. I can come back here like this and weave it back through. Okay. All right, so it's locking it in here. Just turn it around. Okay. Well, you can see where it looks kind of about like a boo-boo, but if I had the same color of yarn, it would hide really well. Okay, now we're going to grab this next back loop here and this back loop and connect them, making that corner. All right, and then just continue across. When you're coming across here, if you do come across a slip stitch, it might be a little harder to, to manage, but you can just um, try and grab with that back loop and um, kind of kind of fudge around it. But it's really going to hide. You're still not going to really see it. So just keep going through the back loops, and when you're done, uh, be sure and run your, um, your weaving back up through there to lock it down. Um, I'd go like six inches if you can and um, get as much extra yarn in there and then that way when it gets washed it's not going to be coming out. Um, sew it back on itself and it'll last you for years and years to come. Okay so here we go. I'm at the end. We can come back through this stitch here and go through a couple here to weave it back on itself and then go back through and cut it off and you are done with that. Well, thank you again to Leisure Arts for providing this pattern for us and the book. If you'd like to get yours, check out the link below and you can get a digital copy or a hard copy sent to you. Thanks again for choosing Good Knit Kisses. Please be sure and subscribe for more loom alongs and crochet alongs and knit alongs in your email box. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye-bye.